All right, hey everyone. Today I wanna to talk about the Google Wave Conversation Model. Now, it's important to understand the Wave Conversation Model as a user, because it lets you understand what Wave is capable of in terms of the conversations and the documents. And it's important to understand it as a Wave API developer, because it lets you understand what your robot is capable of and how your robot can manipulate the waves and conversations. So to start off with, let's talk about the thing that everybody talks about, which is a wave. Now, a wave isn't actually much of anything at all. It's, it's actually a collection of one or more wavelets that a particular viewer has access to within a designated wave. Um, so in this example right here, we have an outer conversation with four participants and an inner conversation with two participants. And um, each of these are actually what we call wavelets. And this particular user has access to these two wavelets. So this is what they see when they see a wave. Another user looking at the wave that doesn't have access to that private reply would only see that outer wavelet. So a wave is actually different depending on who's looking at it because they may or may not have access to every single possible wavelet that's designated with that wave ID. So as you can see, the wavelet is actually where all the conversation and good stuff happens. So let's look in more detail at the wavelet. So a wavelet is a collection of participants and a collection of documents that those participants have access to. The documents are a conversation document, which describes the structure of a conversation, a collection of blips, which is each of the messages, and tags. And there's also a few other hidden documents that we don't actually see rendered in the client. So the participants is just a list of everybody on the wavelet. And we'd also see in that list whether they have full access or read only, which is the basic um, controls that we have right now in the wave model. The tags is very simple, it's just a list of tags. And the conversation document here looks pretty simple. It's just a sequence of blip elements and each blip having an ID. Um, and this basically shows the wave client how it should render each of those blips. We'll see a more complex conversation document later. The blip document here is really simple. Um, it just basically has the text of the message, when are we getting pizza? We'll also see more complex blip document later. So the conversation document, and um, this is really cool because it's what lets us have inline conversations, nested conversations, all these uh, multi-threaded conversations are all made possible via the conversation document. So this example here has one main blip where I put a few sentences of text, and then I've done inline conversations below each of those sentences of text. And that's what we would call an inline thread in the conversation document. The first thread has one blip, the second thread has two blips, and the third thread actually has an inner thread inside of it. So let's see what that looks like in the actual conversation document XML. So here's the XML, you can see um, there's a blip and then the blip has subchildren that are thread elements and they specify that they are inline as an attribute of the thread element. So you can see this is it's a very simple um, XML-like structure that lets us specify rather complex and nested conversations. Now, the really cool thing about conversation documents is the inherent flexibility in this format. So we envision a future where users and API developers can actually perform something we like to call blip surgery, which means that you could move blips around inside of a conversation and you can move threads around and it's all highly flexible, right? Um, so this is a really cool future because it means that you can better curate your waves and um, you know, if you see a thread that really should have gone up there, then you would simply drag and drop it over there. And this is a flexibility that's in Wave and it's not in a lot of other uh, conversation formats out there. So, now let's talk about the blip document. So the really cool thing about the blip document is that we can actually do multimedia rich messages inside of a blip instead of just doing text. And the way we do this is by using a combination of elements and annotations. So in the example here, uh, the annotations make 
the awesome bold and makes the image element show up and makes the link link off to a Picasso album. So the elements are specified in the blip XML. And you can see we start with a really basic element, the line element. And that can have attributes like alignment, whether it's bulleted, heading, etc. Then we have some text, and then we have the image element, which has the attribute of the URL, which specifies you know, where that image comes from. Um, so those are really basic elements, but there's a long list of elements you can have inside a wave blip, uh, line, gadget, installer, attachment, image, and then a bunch of form elements to help you get structured input from wave users. Then we have the annotations, and in the example I showed, many of the annotations are used to style the blip. And an annotation is a key and a value applied to a particular range of characters, and the wave client may decide to render particular annotations particular ways, um, particularly with our style annotations. So for example, from start 17 to end 24, we have style font weight equals bold. And that means that the wave client is going to render characters 17 through 24 as bold using you know, simple CSS. We also have an annotation for linking. So from 72 to 76, we're going to link off to the picture album. Now those are the, the annotations that the wave client kind of special cases and renders specially. Um, but there are also some annotations that the wave client sets uh, for its own use that it, it doesn't render to the user. So, for example, the client is always analyzing the, ink, the language that a uh, wave user is typing, and then it uh, annotates the characters for, to specify what language it's in. So here it says that the entire blip is in English, which is correct, um, with the lang equals n annotation. And then the spelling agent can actually use those annotations to decide what spelling suggestions to make. So that's a custom annotation that the wave client uses, but also wave developers can set their own custom annotations. If they want to specify a particular range of text is important for the robot, they can just set a, you know, their, their own annotation that says, my robot thinks it's important, value equals whatever. Um, so it's also a way of actually putting data inside of a wave for a particular range of characters. So annotations are really cool because we can separate content from presentation and we can store extra data. So here's a list of the annotations that the wave client considers special. And anything besides this uh, would just be considered a custom annotation and ignored by the client. And that's basically the Google Wave conversation model. Uh, hopefully that helps you understand Wave better, both from the user point of view and from the Wave developer point of view. Uh, if you have any questions, please post in one of our handy forums. All right, see you later.